Lane is Amanda Zaleski, an exercise physiologist at Hartford Hospital. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. So tell us about this new statement. What does it say? This new scientific statement says that most adults with elevated blood pressure or cholesterol should first be prescribed a lifestyle-only treatment to reduce these risk factors. And it goes on to reinforce that of all of the lifestyle recommendations we can make, increasing our physical activity alone has substantial benefits for our health. All right, you've authored a book on this uh, title. What did you learn in your research? We did. So this is the newly published book you're referencing in which I wrote the exercise prescription for hypertension. One of the things that's so unique about blood pressure is that it responds immediately to exercise. So if I go for a walk, my blood pressure is going to be five to seven points lower than when I started. And this lasts for 24 hours. And what we've learned through research done at Hartford Hospital is that measuring your blood pressure at home and seeing this immediate reduction right in front of your eyes is a very powerful motivator. And this can be a really relatively easy and inexpensive way to help patients stick with the new exercise program. That's pretty remarkable that the prescription is primarily physical activity. What kind of activity should people be doing and how much? Yeah, so the new exercise prescription is to aim for 20 to 30 minutes a day of moderate intensity exercise to total 150 minutes per week. And this 20 to 30 minutes per day can either be continuous or accumulated. Regardless, we really encourage adults with hypertension to try to do a little something every single day. And that's because we want patients to experience those immediate blood pressure lowering benefits I mentioned earlier. And lastly, one new finding that's exciting is that aerobic and resistance exercise appear to be equally effective at lowering our blood pressure. So the good news there is that patients should really just focus on uh, doing any type of activity they enjoy. All right, and you're not saying to people throw out your medications, right? Of course, yeah. There is going to be a proportion of people who may still need a little bit of help from medication, and that's okay. It is so critical that these folks continue to pursue a healthy lifestyle, and there's two good reasons. One is we want to prevent the progression or worsening of their disease, and the second is that we think that there's some evidence that medications work synergistically with exercise and they can magnify each other. So in other words, it becomes more of a one plus one equals three. Um, this likely translates to superior clinical benefit. All right, quick last question. Exercise also benefits the mental health, right? Of course, and actually there's a lot of emerging research right now looking at varying types of intensity. Is it HIIT training? Is it light intensity? What we're finding is simply you know yourself best, right? And so it's going to really vary for everyone. So just kind of tinker around and see what works for you. Excellent advice. All right, good information, great research. Dr. Amanda Zaleski, exercise physiologist at Hartford Hospital. Thank you for joining us today. Good information. Thank you so much for having me.